the, uh, the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, denouncing the accord. Uh, a spokesman saying the Palestinian leadership rejects and denounces the UAE, Israeli and US trilateral surprising announcement. Uh, a betrayal of Jerusalem. Uh, also accusations that you are stabbing them in the back. According to any decent individual out there, you guys know that to backstab your own family and friends is an absolute no-go. Now if that's the decent folk, what about the not so decent folk, yeah? Let's look at the gangsters, even these guys have limits. But I know what you're thinking, what do you know mate? You're handsome, you're intelligent, blah blah blah, but you're not a gangster. Alright, fair enough. Let me speak to my brother Frenzo Harami, who is in this lifestyle. Yes my bro, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Small to Jannah fam, I can't believe what UAE and Bahrain are doing by publicly normalizing ties with Israel. Like how can they do this while our brothers and sisters in Palestine are still being persecuted? Nothing's changed and now they're just siding with them. Like seriously, like, I'm from the roads, I'm from the streets. Yeah, we stab people, shoot people, sell drugs, tie people up, but even we have ethics and integrity. Yeah, we abide by a strict code of conduct. And one of the most important things, my bro, is that we don't sell out our brothers and sisters, no matter what. Yeah, but how can they do this? Seriously, Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. Simple as that, my bro. Now Israel has been unofficially and illegally taking bits of Palestine by building settlements in it. Let's think of it like this, yeah? You let me stay in your guest room, cool. But every week I sneak in one of my family members who takes over one room of your household. As the months progress, the house <laughs> is pretty much populated by my family members and you only have one room left. And then the police or whoever comes and says, you know what, now that these guys are living there, you might as well solve it amongst each other, yeah? Why don't you divide the thing, yeah? I've only got one room left. They need places to live too. So recently Israel has officially announced that they're gonna be taking more bits. This is daylight robbery on another level. Now when it comes to oil and resources, other countries are quick to send armies and condemn these things quickity quick quick. But here countries have just been giving it all that and saying oh, hey Israel, can you stop it please? It's very naughty. Again the analogy is like someone coming to rob my house, I've got 20 police members inside my house. As this thief comes in, the police goes Oi! Stop that! Don't behave yourself! Don't you you put that down there? You you put that down there, buddy. And the guy carries on and leaves, and they're like, "That's it! Just don't do it again." The media calls this annexing, yeah, where Israel says it's gonna take another chunk of Palestine. Obviously, it's better than calling it illegally stealing, yeah. So what they've done is they've given a more civilized term, as it were, polishing a turd trying to make it seem a bit more decent. And oh yeah, Palestine in the news nowadays is known as West Bank and Gaza. After 49 years, Israel and the United Arab Emirates will fully normalize their diplomatic relations. So the UAE comes in with this cape, yeah, and says, Oi, you guys stop that. If you stop it, we'll be your friends. And the media calls it normalizing relations. I would call it other things, but I mean you got kids watching and that isn't it? You know I'm coming straight out the hood right? <laughs> so Israel goes Nah, no thanks. But we will delay it for a while yeah? Israel is committed to suspend any annexation plans. And the UAE goes Okay boss, thanks, thanks for everything. Israel appears to be being rewarded for not doing something rather than having any real progress in terms of the uh, the peace process between uh, Israel and the Palestinians. Of course under the Arab Peace Initiative there should come first a settlement to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict before any normalization. And rather than retreating yeah, humbly and shutting your mouth, the UAE tries to make it out like they are the saviors. This is a win-win deal, it's a win-win deal for peace in the region. <laughs> And it brings actually a ray of hope 
in a very difficult time in our region. Do you apologize and don't make me take off my belt? With uh, American help, American help, uh, we've been concerned like many, many other countries. <laughs> And of course now other nations have become emboldened and are following their footsteps. The next country you got is Bahrain. Saudi Arabia although unofficially they're quite tight with Israel but officially they're getting their people ready. They're releasing pro-Israeli programs and they got the Imam of the Kaaba, yeah, the legend himself Imam Sudais to give a pro-Israeli speech as well. You know, there's a famous saying that says it's impossible to build one's happiness on someone else's unhappiness. But it seems that these leaders are not only sealing their own fates but the fates of their people. Which is unfair because it's not like they've had a vote. If you ask their populations, I'm sure their populations will be against this. If you guys want to look more into this, the first country to normalize relations with Israel, Muslim nations, was Egypt. Yeah, just search Camp David Accords, which literally means that Egypt gets a handsome amount of money to shut up and mind its own business. Yeah, and the second country was Jordan. Yeah, similar deal. Now you could argue that Egypt and Jordan are bordering with Israel. Yeah, so naturally some settlement or some deal was inevitable. But what about the UAE, Bahrain and Saudi? What's their excuse? It's not like they're poor countries either. If I've missed something, let me know in the comments. Let's leave it there guys. Until next time, Salaamu Alaikum.